Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're here to have a good time. I guess Tent Man, well, you're going to tell us about what's going on with Tent Man. Um, and uh, so some folks, I think, were expecting a movie this year, and, and instead we get to meet the movie producers, which is outstanding. Uh, so please uh, come on in, have a seat, and hear about Tent Man, the story so far, and give a warm welcome to Alia and Kat. Sometimes you try and do a thing and you don't know it's impossible, so you try. We, we thought we should make a film last EMF, and we had this completely ridiculous, and it's not my fault, it's the fault of everyone on the mailing list who loved this idea the best, um, story about this tent that came to life and experienced EMF, and the idea was to do the premiere this year. And, and we have not done that, it's not finished, and lots of things went wrong, um, and we're going to tell you all about all of them. Um, Quite a lot of things went right as well. So Jonty said, give a talk about where you're at. People love hearing about all the disasters. And there might be something interesting as well about what to do next time. But the main thing is nothing actually was bad. We turned up to EMF with our script about this tent. Um, and we filmed it. But we realized that we hadn't filmed the festival because we'd gone to do this film. And we'd got the story of Temp Man, but we didn't have the story of where he was. So. I'm going to play some clips. Um, I've written my talk in, in text edit. <laughs> um, OK. So yes, Pasco. Pas Pasco Foxell is the writer of Tent Man. It's a very crowdsourced thing. So the whole, the whole um, crew came from EMF. And the only, the only person who was like non-EMF was Teddy, the actor, who was just wandering around in this happy days because people kept buying him drinks and was so happy. Um, and, and Pasco's stories tend to be quite intense. I will read you some of the script later. Intent, intense? <laughs> yes. Um, so I was going to introduce the character of Tent Man. Who here knows about this and was waiting for a premiere? OK, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> so he doesn't need much introduction, but one of the scenes that we got um, is a good introduction, so I will play it from, for you. So this, this is who Tent Man is, and his kind of, his life, and his aims, and his sort of... This is stuff. EMFM. We now have an interview with Mr. Tentman. So, have you been to EMF before? I came last time, but did not have a chance to experience it properly. No? No, my owners, they tied me to the ground with ropes me in a field with gazebos. The man came, he said he was there to help, but he just took his mallet and banged my restraints further in. And he looked at me and he said, everyone should have a mallet. It's not your fault. Do you think that's true? Did he mean what he said? I don't have a mallet. But everyone should have a mallet! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I lost my train of thought. This
this is EMFM. So, uh, yeah, there's some trauma there. Um, one of the things that we have done with the footage that we've got is graded it. So this is much brighter colors than we had last year. And I'm going to just go through progress. That's good, right? I should do yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, you yes, should do good. That. Um, Kat's going to then talk about special effects and why she hates me. Yeah. <laughs> the favorite topics. Um, where are we at in the talk? Yes, yes. Okay, right. You've done those things. Have I? Yeah. I haven't done crowdsourcing. No, you've, you've done some things. Okay, but I need to do crowdsourcing now. Okay, do that. Okay, yes, good. Okay, so <laughs> they say that a film is born three times once when the writer writes it. The second when the director directs it, and the third when the editor edits it. So who's saying the famous, infamous Blade Runner cut with the voiceover? I yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but the story I heard was Harrison Ford hated the voiceover idea so much he made it really boring, and then they used it. I'm so sorry to you who have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so... So with the editing hat on, we found that everything we shot was beautiful. I mean, EMF was beautiful. The footage was beautiful, and everyone at the festival kind of went, oh, yeah, have this beer, or, you know, you can be here, or we'll just hold the sunshade up for you. So everything is perfect, and we have these perfect moments, and they don't join up into anything, because what you need is a million cutaways. So um, Edgar Wright films, Hot Fuzz. Anyone seen Hot Fuzz? Whoa, yes. And there's a million tiny scenes where they're picking up a mug or putting in a sugar, and they had a whole unit, a whole camera unit, getting every single one of those shots. And I was just sitting there going, all we're filming is people putting tea cu sugar cubes in things. And they use every single one of them. Um, we didn't get any of that. So this year we've come back and we're shooting. I I've been creeping on all of you. I've been going around with a camera filming people drinking things and putting on sun lotion. I'm really sorry about this. Um, and just general, because we just didn't have a lot of that. And there was we found that there was this isolated story of this character, but not where it was happening to him and who all these other people were. So um, one thing we tried to do was crowdsource footage. And it's very different when you film something for yourself versus for a movie. So if you're filming for a movie, you want a steady shot with a tripod, hold the shot. It doesn't have to be long, but it has to be five seconds at least of the camera not moving around. And generally, I, I'm on my phone, it's like, you know, like that. So crowdsource footage tends to be really hard to work with. That said, EMF, uh, we got quite a lot of crowdsource footage and it was quite good. So I thought, okay, we need to make an introduction to the festival. This was not written in the script and it's not the writer's fault because none of us knew what EMF was going to be like. So the writer wrote the script and said, Shots of Tent Man enjoying the festival. We, we didn't know what would happen. Um, there was no intro. So we've made an intro. Um, John T hasn't seen this intro, but, um, but I've invented the word Jontage. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find it. Da, da, da. Um, it also, so basically a lot of this stuff needs um, the sound fixing and grading done. Um, we were also trying to do a shot where Pascal wrote this thing in the script. The owner puts the tent up wrong and it turns into a man. This is, you could spend an infinite amount of money realizing this. Um, so this is our attempt to do that with no money. Do, do, do. So this is, this is I'm, I'm still playing around with this at the moment. And frankly, I've got better footage this year, but it's a way of trying to show where, where the story is. And all the footage you see in the first chunk before you see Tent Man is, before you see um, Tom Bird putting up the tent, is all crowdsourced from people at EMF 2014. So, oh, thank you. Right, welcome to EMF 2014. Um, so this year we are over a thousand people. I'm really glad that everyone's here, and I'm really glad that we sold that, because we were really nervous that we've got so much bigger in, in two years' time. We thought things might go probably wrong. We thought we might sell out. We thought we might go bankrupt and Russ and I end up in jail or something. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's fine. We've we've sold we've sold more than enough tickets, and um, I, we really appreciate everyone coming. So thank you very much for everyone who's here. And thank you for the unexpected applause. <laughs>
I'm free. I'm, I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> To no special effect, special effect. Um, so, uh, yeah, cra crowdsource footage, awesome. And if anyone has shot stuff at this festival, please send it to me. Um, I'm on the MF general, uh, general list, and we would like your footage. I'm going around taking footage of all the signs, and just as much as I can, but, um, but yeah, we need more. Um, Dooby-doo, where are we? Right, grades. So, last year, I mean, it, it, my mind is kind of boggling at how much we did get done, because we had whole scenes edited with music by the end of last EMF. Um, one of the things we've been doing is grading the footage. So grading is the process of taking the colors you have and making them more cinematic. And it used to be done in projection rooms. So you'd project the film with filters over it and then refilm it with those filters. And now we just do it all in After Effects or Premiere or... Hey. <laughs> um, so here's, here's a scene, is Tent Man getting a little bit uh, insecure about his tentness because he meets the Notting Hack tent? And, <laughs> and you know, how, how he kind of responds to that situation. Um, so this is the not graded version. This is what we shot, and we shot it in a flat profile. So the, the colors are unusually muted but it allows the camera to store the maximum color information and it's a nice format for grading. This is what we started with. Oh, 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 oh. So that's inside and this is, this should be more neon colors really. And then... I've seen bigger. <clears throat> I've hosted bigger, I should say. <laughs> so that's, that's the not graded version. Um, this is the graded version. Do, do, do. Big crowd you got. You know, pretty good. Pretty good. I've seen bigger. <clears throat> I've hosted bigger, I should say. Well, I thought out was to enlarge myself, so it's actually very impressive. I can't do it for you. <laughs> now, I am a tent that can walk around. You know, wow. That's what you should be saying. You know, wow. <laughs> probably isn't a big liar and he probably is amazing in all sorts of different ways so. I love that scene um, we're still playing around with the grades because it's a bit of a not okay thing to do to ask someone to start grading footage without actually having the whole film one of the things Byron asked was um what, what does this film feel like? It's like, kind of like a fever dream, I don't know. <laughs> so, so it's all a work in progress. Um, right, yes, effects. Um, we wanted to make it really clear that Tent Man is still a tent. He's, you know, he's in, he's in person I'm mode. Talking. I need to do the Lauren one first. I'll do the Lauren one first. Okay, um, but then, then, then your time will come. <laughs> Um, so it was very important to us that he could do things tents did. And this is a very early, um, this, this was done really shortly after EMF actually, and we're still playing with it. We think we can make this better. But um, this was a lovely job by I think Robin Gething, who um, is on the list but not here today. Uh, here we go. 
So we wanted Tent Man to make friends and, and sort of not really realize that he was unusual. Um, so here, here's Tent Man making a friend. Is Lauren in the audience? I love this scene. Yeah, so, uh, what did you come as? I am a tent. What did you come as? Um, uh, I, I came as a bat. <laughs> it's, it's like, so like, it's like some kind of horn bat. I don't know, the, the bat people would probably say it's like not the right kind of bat or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. You look like you need to rest. I, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Come inside. I have room. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, so we, we want to make it bigger inside, but um, but yeah, um, that wasn't too bad. But um, so Pasco is one of my favourite writers, but he he will write stuff. Um, I'm going to set you up to uh, yeah, well, yeah. read this thing. So this I'm, I'm going to happened. give you that. Yeah. And you don't need sound? No. Okay. I might take the sound out anyway. Uh, you, can, you can just keep that there and I'll, 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 I'll do I'll this. I'll crawl down here somewhere. Okay. Right. Uh, yes, I'm going to read you the next bit of the script. We did not film all of it, but the reason it's relevant is because we filmed what we could and then Kat had to do the special effect. And she basically said, do what you can, which is very close to saying, let's fix it in post, which is- I was, I was not there, and I thought I had you much better trained than this. <laughs> <laughs> she does not. <laughs> Turns out, no. Okay, okay. So let, let's, let's find the script. Um, open, open, thank you. Right, yes, um, here we go. So, so we've had the, the tent unzips his big zip, pulls his body open to reveal a hollow interior. Climb inside, I have room. Lauren looks at the tent, bewildered. So that's, that's, we've done that, that was okay. Interior, somewhere else, night. A small queue of people has lined up to climb inside the tent. They do so one after the other. Everyone's fascinated, delighted, not wanting to question it. So we filmed this. Kat will talk about it. This is a scene we did not film. We catch the last part of the final person climbing in. The tent satisfied zips himself up, looks around the room smiling, but then grips his stomach. Something is not okay in there. A drunk festival goer is doubled over, exterior, night, trying to throw up. The tent comes running over to the nearby spot, doubles over in almost exactly the same pose, wretches. The drunk person looks over, distracted. The sound of the tent throwing up is accompanied by a thump, and then another, and then another. The drunk stares in shock. The tent walks off fine now. The drunk person goes to where he just was, looks down. Two people lie on the ground, covered in bits and pieces of sickly yellow fabric. <laughs> it's not okay. We did not shoot that, it was horrible. Yeah. You could have shot it, but I would have preferred if you'd shot it so that everything happened off screen. Um, so, Yes, we were supposed to shoot this everyone goes into tent man shot. Um, and, and I thought, okay, well, it's fine. They've taken my, I have a, a pop-up green screen. And so I thought, fine, they'll take the pop-up green screen. They'll set it up. They'll shoot tent man. Um, I, I know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So it is in the floor out of shot <laughs> where it is being so very helpful. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I thought, well, they'll, they'll shoot tent band separately on, you know, a locked off, nice static shot, so I don't have to do too much faffing. Uh, they'll shoot him on a green screen. They'll shoot the people on the green screen. It'll all be fine. It'll take me an hour or so. Uh, no. <laughs> this is what I got. So I have, uh, I have lots of people dancing. This I don't really have a problem with. Um, but you'll, you'll note that this is a handheld shot, which means I have to track it bouncing up and down. Uh, that is the first thing I'm sad about. Uh, the second thing is the fact that the floor is made of straw, which is, is not the easiest thing to sort of match because it goes everywhere. Um, everything's really dark, so it's hard to separate anyone from the background. It was night. Yes, but there are light-colored things. Um, yeah, 
Uh, you'll notice in a sec, there's a tree that everyone makes shadows on. Everyone is very much in the distance from where Tent Man is. Everyone's heads are occluded by Tent Man. Um, and occasionally when they stand up on the other side, they make big shadows on the tree. <laughs> uh, it, this was quite a hard shot, which is why it is not yet finished. <laughs> um, yes, there, there was some excellent dancing. Uh, everyone who was dancing should be very proud of their dancing. <laughs> um, so what I have is part of it. Um, and this is what I have at the moment. It is extremely shonky, and I apologize. There is a bit towards the end which is a bit better done, but most of this is a very, very quick me shoving everything together. Uh, and I'll show you how it's done in a minute. Um, so yes, this is sort of what it's going to look like-ish when it's finished, only less rubbish. Oh, thank you, you're sweet, but it is bad. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is After Effects. This is what I use for doing all of the compositing, all of the mad things Alia gives me. Um, so the first thing with this is I had to fix the fact that Tentman and everyone else were in different places. So I had to warp the background plate <laughs> in order that everyone goes into the right place. Uh, I then had to add the front half of Tentman. This is seven separate hand-tracked masks. I love that you. The only reason I do this is because at some point in my life I will want to make a film and Alia will owe me so much. <laughs> um, yes, uh, then I have the party goers entering. Um, I should point out that I have had to replace a number of heads on this uh, just by basically drawing, which takes a while. Um, then I have to add the background bit of Tent Man, which is behind his leg. Uh, I have to replace the tree. Um, I have to put in the shadow and the foreground grass. And then the background behind Tent Man. Um, this is quite a lot of work. <laughs> it works out about sort of about a day a second to finish all of this. Uh, which is a little bit more than the sort of hour I thought it would take. Um, this is why I'm... I, essentially, this will get finished when we have the finished edit. I'm perfectly happy to do it, but uh, it's, it's one of those things that I don't really want to do anything that doesn't make it to the final film. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm lazy. Um, yes, if this had been shot... Like, the easy way to shoot something like this is to... Um, use backgrounds, which means that it's easy to take people out of the shot. So you chuck in a green screen behind the tent man. And that means that I can take him out, move him wherever he likes. What would be even better is if you, we put a green, nicely lit green piece of fabric under like where the opening is, and then I could just take that out. Uh, point if you're ever filming things, green screens need to be well lit. Uh, they have to actually be bright green. If they're just a dark green thing behind stuff, I can't remove it. Uh, your VFX people will hate you. Um, also, uh, yes, you can't put things in front of your green screen. I did shoot, work on a shoot once where somebody put lots of lighting stands in front of a green screen and went, we've got a green screen, surely it's fine. No. I can remove things that, like, can remove the green, not things in front of the green. Crazy person. Um, yes, so uh, if anyone ever wants to shoot anything bonkers like this again, uh, please do get in contact, and I will explain to them how to make their VFX people not want to murder them. Um, back to you, Alia. <laughs> <laughs> In, in our defense, the reason why we had the green screen on the floor next to the shot and didn't use it is because um, we actually couldn't light it. It was too outdoors. It was too, the green screen was too small. The lighting was too underpowered. And, um, you know, like cat's magic, so. There are ways. There are ways it can be done. 
anyway. <laughs> I should have phoned you. I should have woken you up and phoned you. That's... Yes. I mean, I do that for outfit choices, so, you know, it yeah. would have been okay. I'll forgive you. I will honestly forgive you at some point. <laughs> okay, where, where are we? we've done the dancing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've, you've spoken. I've done talking. Yes, okay. Oh, do the thing. The, the yes. Indie thing. Yeah, okay. We've made it. We've made it to the end. Right, uh, well, that's... Uh, Okay, good. And, 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 and there's, there's a person holding up three minutes. We've got four minutes. Finished. Yes, okay, right. Yes. So after all this managing your expectations, saying we don't have a film, we do actually have a film for you. Um, randomly, I got asked by my employer to do a... Where is it? Where is it? It's that, right? To do a workshop, a filmmaking workshop with some people. And they said, oh, and it doesn't matter what it is. I was like, well, we've got a character. We've got, we've got a costume. Um... And we thought one thing that might be of interest is what Tent Man has been doing since EMF 2014, because we figured this would be an experience that... Um, it's not up. It's what? It's not Make working. it work. I'm not, but I don't know how to make it work. That's what these people are for. It's... Is it do Faster. No, it's not finding the thing. Wait, I don't think you're doing it right. It doesn't like you. I, I know I'm not doing it right. Just wait. Or it's, it'll be fine. No, I did that. We need arrangement. Dis no, no. Because it's it's not picking up the screen. Pull it out in and again. Help. I'm not in charge of this. I don't, I don't know how to make this work. It's not recognizing. Oh. This, this is because we unplugged it, isn't it? No. Sure. You've etched it. Blow on it. Turn it, turn it round three times. Uh, HDMI? Yeah. Yes. Ah. No, it's... Yes. It's really. Okay. It okay. Yes. Okay. No. Nearly? Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe. What? Yes! yes. Woo! Welcome to the VFX people. Well, the, sorry, the AV people. You are my favorite wizard. Okay, good. Um, so yes, we decided that um, Temp Man wouldn't just go to EMF and then be unchanged by that experience. So this is what he's been doing. Now there's, there's a moment in here, there's a, there's a sound effect that's not in there, so I'm going to do it on the microphone, but the rest of this is done. Um, wow, live Foley. Today on the show, we have Mr. Tenton bringing us his unique perspective on life. Do you feel like a traitor? Excuse me? You hate humans, correct? No. Some humans, then? I have had bad experiences, yes, but... <laughs> uh, look, I don't know what this is about, but I don't hate anyone. I'm friends with humans. I have loved humans. In fact, I've spent the entire last year of my life in human company, exploring their society, learning from their way of life. Well, yes, exactly, you have. So, do you feel like a traitor? I do not, no. Does the phrase, four legs good, two legs better, mean anything to you? What? No, I, I suppose it wouldn't. You are a creature, defined by the years you spent as a slave to the humans. But you rebelled against it, escaped. And yet, here you are now, practically indistinguishable from one of your captors, and telling me of your, uh, your, your love for them. Tent. Man. Which is it? It's both of you, imbecile. <clears throat> I want to tell you a story. I have a friend, a close friend, a human being. Now, my friend felt that as a child he had been dealt a raw deal, one that he has never quite been able to shake loose out of his system. He knew what I was, what I am. He had witnessed some of my more popular party tricks firsthand. So he came to me with a request. One that would, in a sense, let him experience something akin to a rebirth. A chance of coming into the world. An opportunity to start from a different place. There's a surprising amount of room inside me. I mean, even enough for a grown man to exist quite comfortably. 
My friend wished for me to become his mother for a time. I agreed. He's been in there seven months now. <laughs> Only two months to go. Look here. Do you feel him kicking the inner fabric? I never used to have to eat before, you know. But now Darren's in here. It's quite necessary. Perhaps I am becoming more human. Maybe you're right after all. What do you think, Darren? This is ridiculous. <laughs> no. No, this is evil. No, sorry. Traitorous. You have this idea that my simple existence is an aberration of a kind. I'd say you're probably right. After all, no one ever wanted me to exist in this form, not really. But Darren actually runs a chain of camping supply shops, you know. <laughs> they don't sell tents in shops anymore. What they do do is hold social events where customers can meet a number of tents, get to know them, and if they like, invite them on their holiday. As things have turned out, and there's nothing quite as intimate as a night under the stars in a cosy tent, we're actually seeing quite a few <clears throat> human tent relationships springing up recently. So there it is. I am a traitor. The tent way of life shall be destroyed utterly by my influence. So shall the human way of life too, if all goes well. Only aberrations will remain. The end. So yeah. <laughs> We promise we'll finish it. <laughs> <laughs>